quite transparent. Yeah. All right. Today I'm going to talk about the multi-agent reinforced learning is the path of games from uh, AlphaGo to bus control. As we know, that reinforced learning has recently achieved tremendous empirical successes, and many great applications of reinforced learning include, say, playing game on Go or playing video games, or even uh, the control of robotics. Therefore, actually, there has been a resurgence of interest in the theoretical understanding of RL recently. He will try to understand why these RL methods may work. Actually, if you take a closer look at uh, many of the successful applications of RL I mentioned, most of them naturally involve more than one decision makers, such as playing Go games. Also, if you really want to deploy all these RL methods into practical, like real systems, you have to take into consideration the safety, uh, safety critical concerns of this, all these systems. Therefore, my research was trying to develop proof of RL method that addresses these concerns. And interestingly, I'm going to show you that this can actually be done under a unified framework called Stochastic Games or Markov Games, dated back in uh, Shapley's work in the 50s. And a little bit prelude about the results. What we want to show is that actually we studied the fundamental setting of Markov Games and in several uh, most popular reinforcement learning methods, including model based approach and model free approaches. So, the first part is going to talk about uh, model based multi agent RL. And we study the sample efficiency of this method. We show that this method can actually be nearly optimal. So let me first briefly introduce what we mean by stochastic games. Actually, it is originally uh, introduced by Shapley in his work in the 50s. We study a very simple basic conversion. It's called two player zero sum stochastic games, which is characterized by this tuple where S is a, a set of states, AI is action space of player I, and they, and, uh, they uh, reward RI. Uh, you know, uh, 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 is affected by the joint action of both agents. And the system state transitions following some transition dynamics T, which is also affected by the joint action of both players. And this model can actually be used to model the Go games, where you can view like the placement or the positions of the stones at the state. And every time, if you ever run, if uh, either of the players make a move, it corresponds to the action, and it will affect how the state transitions to the next state. And also, really, if you uh, consider an infinite random setting, you also, also sometimes need to have some discount factor on the long-term accumulated reward. So one key challenge in uh, multi-agent RL is the issue called non-stationarity, because from one agent's perspective, the environment is changing while other agents are adapting their policies. So one possible remedy for this is to use some model-based approach, where we somehow have a bunch of data, and then we use the data to estimate some model like the model of the games. And then we do any kind of uh, black box planning to try to find a good policy out of this estimated model. By saying model here, what we miss mostly mean estimating the transition dynamics, dynamics P hat. And the fundamental question here is how many samples are needed for this simple plugin method in this multi agent RL setting? So our answer is that such a simple method, plugin method can be nearly min max optimal. More specifically, what we mean is that this model-based multi-agent RL approach can achieve this order of sample complexity. If you recall, S is the cardinality of the state space. A1 and A2 are the cardinality of like action spaces of two players. Gamma is the discounting factor. And epsilon is the accuracy you want to achieve. Actually, this kind of sample complexity also holds in funding the Nash equilibrium for multiple reward functions or polynomial number of reward functions simultaneously. On the other hand, we have the lower bound of this complexity, which depends on the parameter uh, problem parameters in this way, where you have a, a1 plus a2 kind of dependence. This actually is kind of unique in the multi-agent setting, because if in, uh, you are considered a single agent setting, actually the a2, for example, would be a dummy, a dummy a player, and this two bound will match. However, this kind of provides some guidance for empirical studies in using this model-based approach is that it has some power because it can inherently handle multiple rewards on multiple tasks. However, it is also has some limitation in the sense that it's less adapti adaptive, and therefore it has to be suboptimal in terms of the action space dependence. So the natural question arises, is it possible to reduce the complexity, in, uh, which could be exponential in the number of agents to the case where it might be linear in the number of agents? So the model-based approach seems hopeless, although it is tight, in some other problem dependencies, but it seems not in terms of this action dependence. Maybe we should resort to some model free method to try to address this issue. So second part is about how we use this method called decentralized Q learning. 
to make uh, to to achieve this goal. So if you recall, why is multi-agent RL challenging? There are two key challenges uh, challenges here. One is we call non stationarity because other agents are also learning simultaneously. Another issue is a scalability issue, especially when there are a large number of agents and you cannot coordinate all of them. So actually, therefore, the one uh, natural method is to run independent uh, 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 kind of reinforced learning simultaneously for all the agents. We call it decentralized multi-agent RL or independent multi-agent RL. However, people have actually thought about this idea back in the 90s. There are some uh, known non-convergence results in showing that if you naively apply all the decentralized RL methods for all the agents, they will divert easily. So can we develop some symmetric and fully decentralized multi-agent RL dynamics that prove a convergence? So before diving into the details, let's see why this, is, uh, this decentralized learning is an important problem. Actually, if you consider many practical multi-agent learning scenarios, they involve some decentralized decision-making, such as the control of robots or the urban traffic control problems. It is also a very natural assumption in uh, economics. We are modeling like the rational uh, decision makers. In practice, the agents are myopic, they're self-interested, and sometimes they only have local observation. And oftentimes they are not even aware of the existence of other agents or even not aware of the structure of the game. For example, whether the game is zero sum or not. Also, this decentralized learning addresses a scalability issue due to the large number of agents. So another, this is uh, the last one is some, something I think is kind of overlooked by the recent studies on multi-agent RL is that actually one justification of equilibrium or Nash equilibrium specifically in static normal form games is that it is a net arises as a natural outcome of some myopic fast response learning dynamics. However, it is not clear whether this story also holds in the stochastic or dynamic games. So what we show is actually we develop some simple decentralized Q learning dynamics that prove it converges to the Nash equilibrium for two bare zero sum stochastic games. So we develop some best response type of learning dynamics where the action of the opponent cannot be observed. More specifically, the algorithm consists, uh, uh, consists of two steps. The first step is that the player was trying to infer the opponent's strategy by estimating something called local Q function. So this step looks very similar to like the Q learning or independent Q learning. But one caveat here is that we are not updating here with the Q, but with some additional estimate of the value function. And then in the second step, the player will estimate the value function and then the player will take a soft gradient policy with respect, with respect to this local Q estimate and keep doing this and plug in the V into the local Q update. So know that this dynamics is fully decentralized. It can be uh, implemented by each single agent. It is natural for self-interested players. It is symmetric and you don't need to coordinate between the agents. Another feature of the dynamics is that this, this dynamics is two times scale in the sense that asymptotically the update of the local Q function is faster than estimate of the local V function. And the intuition here is that in that case, from the updating of the local Q function, it is as if you are solving some auxiliary normal form game with a fixed payoff matrix. Also this update, update rule for each agent, he or she is oblivious to the presence of the opponent and nor being aware of the structure of the game. This is something called radically uncoupled. It's one of the most challenging learning scenarios in learning games. And then we show that this kind of decentralized Q-learning converges to a Nash equilibrium. And also we show that this learning dynamics is also rational in the sense that if the opponent is weak, they are uh, adapting, uh, adopting some stationary strategy, our learning dynamics can convert to the best response to that. Finally, let me wrap up by introducing some the third approach where we develop policy optimization method for some of another kind of a fundamental class of stochastic games. So most of the uh, games I talk about are like in the tabular case, the basic uh, zero sum stochastic games. The most basic uh, games in the continuous space is what we call the linear quadratic dynamics games. More specifically, we know that the transition of the state right now follows some linear dynamics where the A1 and A2 enters the transition of the states in also in a linear way. And you can see here is the uh, random noise. And also at each stage, the cost has this quadratic form. It is quadratic with respect to system state and the actions of both agents. And then if you uh, like what uh, uh, practical people do, you can prime trace your policy in a certain way. And in this very standard and the classical setting, we know that you can prime trace your policy 
in this linear form without mm -hmm. losing any optimality. And then this actually give you, gives you a minimax optimization problem in terms of the policy parameter PNL. So why this is an interesting model, because this is actually a model that unifies a robust control and risk sensitive control that uh, control people have studied for decades. More specifically in the robust control setting, you can view the adversaries or disturbances at the opponent that is always trying to play against you. In the zero-sum setting, if you're trying to solve this min-max problem, and then you solve the uh, inner loop maximization problem to its optimal, it is equivalent to solve some robust control problem with this uh, 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 objective. And then, if, however, if you do policy search in this problem, you can easily show that this is a non-convex, non-concave min-max optimization, optimization problem. Therefore, motivated by stabilizing the training of GANs, we developed some double loop or two time self kind of update rule where you update the inner loop for multiple steps for the parameter of the opponent, and then you update the parameter of the controller for multiple steps. However, even in this case, the landscape of the outer loop objective, which corresponds to the objective of robust control, is highly non convex and non coercive. In the sense that if you compare that on the right hand side with the a landscape of the optimal control problem, like linear quadratic regulator, the cost is not coercive. So it's very challenging to show like how to enforce or regularize the feasibility, which in the robust control setting correspond to the robustness of the controller during policy learning. And interestingly, what we can show is that actually certain policy search directions preserve the robustness of the controller automatically. Something we call implicit regularization in the sense that this certain policy search directions cannot regularize the uh, robustness of the controller during learning, even if you are using constant step size. Also, we show that despite non convexity of the problem, certain policy search directions will not get stuck at a spirit local minimum. And it will convert globally to the global optimal solution of this robust control problem, which corresponds to the Nash equilibrium of the linear quadratic game with globally sublinear rate and locally superlinear rates. So, this is an example of showing that if you run, naively run policy gradient methods on this robust control objective, you can easily get stuck at some uh, uh, suboptimal local optimal, sorry, suboptimal stationary points. If you run the two methods, like natural policy gradient or Gauss Newton method, you can go directly to the global optimal solution very fast. And lastly, the most interesting is that even if you view this policy search as a computation method, where as if you know the model, it still can be much faster than many existing robust control solvers, which is really based on linear matrix inequality or solving like semi-definite programming. So to conclude, we study multi-agent RL in the most fundamental setting, zero-sum stochastic games with approval guarantees. So the takeaway of the talk is that despite being like less adaptive, model-based multi-agent RL approach is nearly optimal in terms of sample efficiency and it can handle multitask simultaneously. Also, despite the non stationarity of multi-agent RL, decentralized queue learning can be made work if you have this kind of two time scale step, step size separation. Finally, despite the non-convexity, pulse optimization can solve certain robust control problem, as well as some linear quadratic dynamic game problem with global optimal guarantees. And also it preserves the robustness of the system automatically, something we term as implicit regularization. And I'm really looking forward to more discussions in the program, if I'm interested in generally in the intersection of learning game theory and control theory. Thank you very much. Look into uh, non asymptotic results, decentralized Q learning. Yes, that's something uh, I'm going or something about looking into right now. I see. Yeah. Okay, so we have a little more time. So let's take a break. We resume again at 2.40. And thanks to all the speakers. Session.